These are awesome tiny little bits of kit and I think every network engineer or if you're into Wi-Fi you should have one of these within your bag. Maybe even two of them because combining them together can be really powerful. These things are called travel routers and we're going to do a deep dive into what you can do with them today. Now first, I'm not 100% sure why these things are called travel routers because I barely travel with these things. They're actually more useful to me when I'm at home. They're a VPN device, they're a Wi-Fi 6 access point. They are a little mini switch. They're a Wi-Fi repeater, a media bridge, a full-blown Wi-Fi router. And heck, you can even get free internet with these. Okay, so I wanna kick this video off by talking about how to get some free Wi-Fi. Now, first off, you haven't heard this from me, and don't try this at home. Both of these portable routers can basically do the same things. One of those things is being able to pick up a Wi-Fi signal and then rebroadcast that Wi-Fi signal. So when you provide these little travel routers some power, they will start broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. If you go ahead and connect to that and then navigate to the IP address of the device, you'll get on the home page. Now this is what the home page of the GL Mini device looks like. Now there's two types of wireless repeater. You've got a dumb repeater, which isn't acting as a router, it's just repeating an original network, or you've got a device like this, which can act as its own router and use a wireless internet connection as its internet source. And that's what we're doing here. So we're gonna tell this device to scan for Wi-Fi. Now to get free internet, you need to be in the lucky position to maybe have like a coffee shop giving out a free Wi-Fi for guests. This is cheeky, but we're gonna use this as our internet source. Right now, I've got access to EE Wi-Fi. And there we go, just like that. 5 gigahertz e Wi-Fi, we're connected and we have an IP address. So now basically I could create my own internet connection in my house using the free Wi-Fi from over the road. But with a second travel router, we can take this a step further. What if I wanted to create a mesh system of Wi-Fi inside of my house to enjoy that free Wi-Fi all over the house? So I'm gonna to connect to our second travel router here. By the way, all of the connection info is plastered on the bottom of these devices. So after logging into our Asus travel router here, you can see that I've actually got this in wireless repeater mode. Now we don't wanna put this one in router mode because we've got our GL iNet upstairs taking care of our internal routing using the free Wi-Fi as its internet source. And just like that, this thing is displaying us with the list of Wi-Fi that it can find. So we're gonna connect to the GLI net, put in the password, and then this thing is basically now acting as a wireless repeater. So to test this, I'm just gonna leave this in this room and then we can go into the games room downstairs and still see if we have free internet access. Therefore, it's all over the house via these small battery powered devices. Very cool. Very demure. Right, so let's see what sort of bitrate we're getting downstairs. Yeah, 20 meg. I mean, that is unbelievable. So we were getting 30 upstairs. But just to reiterate, because I feel like I need to, this is going from my phone to the Asus on the middle floor to the GLI net on the top floor, and then it's picking up its internet from some free Wi-Fi in the street. Like, that is absolutely mind-blowing to me. And I'd just like to mention as well that 30 meg limit is a limit of the free Wi-Fi. If you repeat a standard Wi-Fi 6 signal with these, you can expect around 400 meg. So scenario number two, let's just say that I'm at my desk, whether I'm at work, at home, I am in a hotel room, and I have available to me a LAN connection, and I'm using that LAN connection on my device. In this case, it's a MacBook Pro. However, I'd love some Wi-Fi in here for my portable devices like my phone. This thing has Wi-Fi 6 built into it, so this is basically a Wi-Fi 6 access point powered via USB. So to do this, we're gonna need another patch cord and the original internet connection. I'm gonna disconnect this from my PC and I'm gonna plug it into the one side of our travel router. And then we're gonna take our patch cord, plug this into the LAN side, and then this into my laptop. If I go down here to administration, as you can see, I'm in access point mode or AP mode. Yet again, another use case for these small little travel routers. And guess what? I'm not even traveling. 
Okay, so we're out in the wild of a local car park and I'm actually using the GL Mini here to hopefully use a VPN to remote back home. Now this time, how are we gonna give the GL Mini, our travel router, an internet connection? In this case, it actually has a USB 3 port on it which I've got connected up to my iPhone and hopefully I can use my iPhone's hotspot as our internet connection. So if I scroll down here, as you can see, it says tethering iOS. So let's click connect and see if this thing can get on the internet through my iPhone over USB. Right, I'm just doing a quick speed test here. And as you can see, we boosted up to 100 meg a second there and we're back up again, 150 meg over the 5G on my phone going through the GL Mini. I'm gonna drop the configuration file for my home VPN onto this device. And then that is basically it. All we have to do in here is start it and let's hope it connects. This thing is connected. So apparently I'm now at home and that really isn't bad VPN performance whatsoever. So I'm gonna to go to Finder and connect to server and then I'm gonna to connect to the SMB share that's at home. And there we go. Fairly stuttery playback of some 4K CCTV footage, which is on my NAS at home, going over my phone's 5G connection to the VPN on the GLI net wirelessly to my laptop. You just couldn't do stuff like this five years ago, especially with a small little inexpensive device like this. And this is really a testament as to how far not only Wi-Fi technology, but processor efficiency has come on over the last five years. The fact this is all being powered off the USB from my Tesla blows my mind. The GLI net device specifically, if it's being used in router mode, has the option to install certain packages. Now there's loads, but just for a quick demonstration, you can install a router level ad block, meaning that every device that connects to your network has ad block already enabled. And it goes without saying, all of the features that I've showed you today are obviously achievable. However, if you wanted, this thing could just be your router. You could feed it a WAN connection over Ethernet, and then you could plug in a LAN connection and, for example, build out your home network with an Ethernet switch and a whole load of wireless access points like you would do if you weren't using a travel router as your main router. I don't know why these things are called travel routers because they're basically just baby routers with loads of features at a decent price. Anyway guys, I hope you've learned something today and it's time to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Now, like these little travel routers, Squarespace is a platform that's got loads of great tools to help you out on the website side of things. I actually have a website on Squarespace for my Wi-Fi company. You can see it on screen now and it has loads of cool animations as you scroll down the pages. It was super simple to set up. Basically, you choose from one of the thousands of readily available templates. You choose it and then you can customize it to make it yours. And it's not just simple websites. They have things like code injection if you want to get a little bit fancy with it. They've also got e-commerce on there so you can actually sell things legally on your Squarespace website, which is sick. If you want to see how the website is going to appear on a search engine like Google, absolutely fine. You can use their SEO to see this. And Squarespace, as well as sorting out the website, will also sort out your domain, which is the actual website name. So if you would like to save yourself 10% and support TechFlow in the process, please use code TechFlow or go to squarespace.com forward slash TechFlow. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to Asus and GLINet for creating some really small, inexpensive little routers. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.